If you found yourself interested in delving into medium format film photography, but are a little weary or intimidated by mechanical cameras like the Mamiya RB67, cameras that require you to learn light metering and don't have autofocus, then perhaps the Mamiya 645 AFD with its autofocus features and exposure metering system might be the perfect camera for you. Yeah, this medium format camera is an incredible powerhouse. It's not really been talked about that much on YouTube, so I'm happy to share it with you guys and go over what I like about it, what I don't like about it, take some nice flicks, you know, check out Yokohama. So you load it up. So you got the arrow there. Good to go. aperture priority mode right now and so I shoot this typically just aperture priority so that you just set your aperture and then you can go ahead and fire and I'll set the shutter speed for you the shutter speed I think goes up to 1 4,000 so you can shoot wide open during the day and still get for some not overexposed shots so I'm gonna hit this at a uh, f9.5 perfect almost got, almost got destroyed by the, by the bike <laughs> So one of the cool things about obviously the 645 is that it has a dark slide. You pull it out when you're about to shoot, you put it, slide that nice and crispy in. The AFD actually comes with the blue tab. And then the way that you know if you have a 645 AF is the tab is actually red. I don't know, this strap also came with it. I believe this is a Mamiya strap, but it might be red for the AF, I don't know. I have to ask my buddy Shaman, he has the AF version, but uh, it's nice. you want to actually go out and shoot. Sometimes, some camera's got some weak shutter sounds, but this one's got a really clean one. I'm gonna shoot this at a uh, F13. I don't know how this shot's gonna come out because Obviously the back, the foreground is so dark and it's just kind of heavily shadowed and the background's so blown out with the highlights. This would be a good chance to kind of see the dynamic range of this film. I'm shooting on 200 films, so I expect it to be decent enough. Sometimes when you roll it around, the other side looks just as good or even better, so. Hey, chill out, chill out, chill out. I kind of want a little bit of a glare. Wait for this guy to go by. Hit this at F11. Perfect. Let me go back a little bit. You know, I got that tight lens, you know. It's a crazy shot, bro. I usually shoot in aperture priority. So what you can do is, obviously you just set your, your aperture to whatever. Again, it goes from f2.8 to, I believe, f22. And then as you autofocus, it'll automatically calibrate the shutter speed for you, which is for a street photography setting and then also for high like pace client work, which is what I typically do. Sometimes I bring a Sekonic light meter just to, to make sure that my, my light settings for professional shoots are looking you know perfect and it's not bugging. But the, the light meter on this, the internal light meter on this is really, really good. I haven't had many problems with it. And to be honest, sometimes when you want a camera just to function really quickly and really fast on set, it's really nice to have the autofocus, but also the really, really good light meter. Yeah, so I just have this on after priority usually and that's, kind of like the way I like to go. That's the thing, man. You never know whether to shoot vertically or horizontally.
I got on right now is the 80 mil 2.8. It's a really fast, really sharp, I mean, I think in 35 mil equivalent is like a 50 mil lens. So just imagine a 50 millimeter lens on it. This is the sort of the goat of this, this camera setup. A lot of people use the 80 mil. I actually wanna get, I think they have like a 35 mil, which is basically a super wide lens on this camera, which I wanna get, I wanna do a review on that soon. But the 80 mil, that's, that's the bread and butter of this one. So you can set this on manual focus. I, to be honest, I've, I haven't done manual focus on this at all. The other thing is that the viewfinder, the viewfinder on this is really nice. It's, it's at a good height where you can get up nice and close and it's really wide and it's not too hard to see. It's pretty bright. I think the viewfinder is one of the main components of this that I really love. The other medium format kind of own is the Fuji GA645 and I like that one. It also has a really good viewfinder, but I really like the ergonomics of this. It's, it's really easy to use and yeah, it's crispy, very crispy. Should I shoot the rest of this here? Over here. I've been shooting a lot of Kodak Gold just because it's so cheap. I got this roll for 1,600 yen, which is, damn, what's the exchange right now? It's like, I'll say 11 bucks. It's about $11, which is pretty good for, uh, for medium format. I don't know what the cost is in the States right now, but in Japan, that's, that's probably the cheapest you can get right there. Sometimes when you, uh, you screw up a medium format roll, like you let, let it get really loose, you just lose the entire roll. Is that close? I think so. Gucci. The great question Peace posed was, what are the differences between medium format and 35 millimeter, and why, why do you even bother buying a medium format camera? This camera is not cheap. I got this, I got this a little bit cheaper than the current market price. I got it for like $1,600 USD. Now I think with the lens, the, bat, the film back, and then also obviously the body, you're gonna get it for around $2,000, $2,200, which when you think about it, it's a lot for a film camera, first of all. So why, why do you even bother buying something like this, which when you can get a perfectly fine 35 millimeter autofocus, fully, fully light meter, you know, point and shoot or something like that, or even an SLR, why do you even bother buying a camera like the 645 AFD? So the film format and media format, the actual negative you get is I think at least two times bigger than 35. So what you get with that is you get a much larger negative, but also there's a depth of field and a certain medium format look that you get that I, you can't really recreate with an S SLR or 35 mil. You, can't, you can get something similar if you punch in, let's say you're using like an 80 millimeter or even a 100 millimeter, 105 on a 35 millimeter SLR. And so what you're doing is really punching in, you're trying to get that deep depth of field, which comes naturally on a medium format camera with a 35 millimeter SLR. But let's say for like with a point and shoot that you can't achieve the same look as what you get with this camera. This camera, when you shoot on 2.8, obviously it's, it, it's got a certain special look to it. Obviously coupling the 80 millimeter and the depth of field look that you get with this camera with the color and dynamic range you get on film, it's something, it's, it's, it's hard to explain. It's definitely a look that it's unique and it's, you can't, I mean, can you, can you recreate it with digital? If you really saw see a Lightroom and Photoshop, I think you could recreate it pretty similarly, but I think just being able to shoot this on the fly and getting the quality and color that you get with this camera is unparalleled. It's, it's, it's something that's very unique. And compared to like, let's say like an RZ67 where you gotta carry it around, it's like a huge box, this is a little bit more portable. It's not as portable as say the Fuji GA645, which I used to have, which is a very portable 645 alternative for medium format cameras. For the quality you get, the autofocus is incredible. I think the overall package, this is a very unique camera. And it's one I don't think I see talked about enough. So I just wanted to give you my honest thoughts on using this camera on a day-to-day -day basis. We've shot the Nike campaign, also the Puma campaign on this camera, and it's been a lot of fun. And to be honest, when you shoot in film, one of the most important things is the ergonomics and the sort of feel of the camera. And this camera feels incredible. The shutter sound again is, is, I mean, have you ever heard a better shutter sound than that? Come on, like, come on. Jeez.
If you enjoyed today's video, please press the like button, subscribe, it goes a long way, and turn on post notifications so you don't miss out. We're posting every week. Yeah, there's that F8. And a big shout out to my friend Peace Gates. Please check out Peace's channel. It's linked down below. He filmed this entire video and I had a great time shooting some film with him. This is where you don't see right here, huh? Thanks again guys and I'll see you guys in the next one.